Hey guys, it's Lissa. Um, just wanted to come on to table time real quick and show you guys how easy it is to prep for today's meal. We are having chicken and dumplings and I've got a lot of different vegetables I'm going to put in it. You know, we're going to have the potatoes. I know dumplings and potatoes, starch and starch. Yeah, but it's comfort food and it's cold. So, you know, we're having this is what we're having. So it's got potatoes and it's got carrots and it's got celery and so, and it's got onions. And so I'm going to prep it all using the rapid prep. If you haven't seen the rapid prep used, then you're going to see it today. Okay. So here we go. I'm getting ready to cook the vegetable. I mean, getting ready to prep the vegetables. So this is our prep station. I've already cut my potatoes into these slices okay so here we go look perfect here we go sorry these are your slices of potato can you see that these are perfect for this you know what we're doing this application and look how simple that is to slice it just goes so easy and so quickly all right, I'm gonna put in some uh, celery stalks. I kind of cheated. I didn't. Um, I didn't buy celery stalks. I actually bought veggies that were pre-cut because I was feeling tired and I didn't want to cut them myself. So, no, here we go. No, carrots are a little harder. Carrots are kind of like. Um, sweet potatoes so sometimes carrots are a little bit more difficult but they do make these perfect carrot shapes and so I'm just as happy to have the carrots done like that um, and I didn't mind buying them it costs a little bit more it's a little bit pricey but that's okay we're, we're good I can I can deal with that price I was prepared all right so these are my vegetables, and my vegetables are ready to go into my um, stew pot. Actually, I'm using my quick cooker. But when we get to that point, well, you know what? Why don't we just get to that point? Okay, we'll just move all this aside. I've not cut the onion yet, so let me go get that. All right, so we're gonna cut up an onion. I don't mind onion smell on my hands, and one of the reasons I don't is because I have the quickest way in the world to get rid of onion smell. And if you didn't know that you can get rid of onion smell almost instantly by using the stainless steel faucet or your stainless steel sink, then you're missing out. Um, and I'm only going to use half of this onion. So first of all, in order to peel it easily, just slice your onion. Take out that outer layer real quick in one fell swoop instead of standing over a trash can and trying to trying to cut. All right, this I didn't buy, so this I'm just going to cut up because it's just easier now that I'm here to do it quickly. Of course, you know. Using the utility knife. Holy moly. I just love this knife. I really do. This knife is so simple and easy to use. And it stays sharp for some reason. I have had this knife probably a year and a half. And I don't think I've ever had to sharpen this knife. And I use this knife like multiple times a day, every day. And my kids use this knife. I think they like it because it's green. I mean, why not? It's cute. It's fun. It's fun to use. We all like fun stuff, right? Not everything can be, what do they call it? Business in the front and party in the back. <laughs> this is this is my business and my party all at once. All right. I don't put a whole lot of onion. I love the flavor of onion. A lot of people don't particularly care for the flavor of onion. I don't think you can go wrong with onion. <laughs> so, much to my family's chagrin, I have a tendency to over onion a lot of things. But like I said, I just don't get enough. I can't get enough. I mean, I'm the girl that asks for extra onion on her burgers at McDonald's. So, we do a lot of onion. 
I also do a lot of garlic. You do a lot of garlic? Garlic is very good for you. So I do a lot of garlic. All right, I'm going to slide this into the rest of my veggies. So I can just pop it all in at once. Okay, now we are using the quick cooker. I'm going to turn you guys around. Okay, everybody. Just had the beep a minute ago. I'm getting ready to finish releasing all the steam. Press the button. Look at all that. Can you see it? Let me try to... You see the steam? Woo! And do make sure that that is not in front of your cabinets. Because you don't want to ruin your cabinets by letting all that steam go up there. Now, see, look, I've let it go. The button is still somewhat depressed. It's going to go ahead and release steam like it needs to. This little red button that's over here, I don't know, let me see if I can show you the red button. Alright, that red button is raised. Once the steam finishes releasing, that red button is going to go down and it'll drop. You'll see it drop and you'll hear it drop. That's when you know it's okay to take the lid off because this lid is not coming off. It is gasketed and it does lock in place. There's no physical lock. You don't have to push a button or anything like that to get it to unlock. It's that steam button that allows it to unlock. As long as that steam button is raised, this lid is not going to open. If you do open it, for some strange reason you get it open, you will not get it put back on with that steam button in the up position. I know that because I made a boo-boo once and... The steam button was stuck up so just letting everybody know that's how it works so we're going to go ahead and make sure that the rest of this releases quickly steam button is still up high still hearing the steam coming out ah oh, there it went there's your drop all right, that's flush. Open it up. Ooh, mercy. That looks fantastic. It's like looking at the best chicken soup that's waiting for the noodles, doesn't it? Okay, there we go. Now, that doesn't look much like chicken and dumplings, does it? No, nope. that doesn't look like chicken and dumplings at all. It looks delicious, but it doesn't look like chicken and dumplings. So, there's two ways we're going to thicken this up. Who knows what a slurry is? A slurry is where you make a paste that you're going to put into your uh, soup or stew or gravy or whatever else you want to call it. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this marvelous soup. Golly, the smell is phenomenal. And I'm going to add, that's probably a good two or three tablespoons of uh, the soup. So what I'm going to do is whisk this uh, cornstarch in it. And then I'm going to add it to the uh, chicken and dumplings. This is going to help thicken it up. I'm going to cancel this. And in a second, one of the things we're going to do, not only are we going to add this, um, but we're going to put it on sear, and we're going to add the dumplings. Now, I've got the cheesiest, quickest way to add dumplings to chicken and dumplings. Y'all are going to laugh. Okay, that's so perfect. Okay. Jumbo Biscuits, it's a five pack, it's a baby. This is going to be our dumplings. Oh, but that's biscuits. How could that possibly be dumplings? Oh, but they are. You open your biscuits. There's my little slurry. All right, we open the biscuits. Remove one biscuit. Grab said kitchen scissors. Cut said biscuits into pieces. 
each biscuit will give me six dumplings. Make sure that you put them in there, not necessarily on top of one another. I do prefer using the flaky, I mean the buttermilk biscuits for this over flaky, because when you use flaky biscuits, it tends to just kind of fall apart. They almost like disintegrate when you do that. So let's put, go ahead and put this on sear and starch. I hear the family come in. They've been hanging out at the park, I believe. So. Okay, so here we go. Okay, Granny's filming. Can we keep it down a little? Okay. Look at this. This is, this is going to be fantastic. All right, two more biscuits. Okay, before that gets too full, I want to make sure that we add some of the slurry. So let's. Put some of that in there, stir it around. Mm, yum, that's gonna be fantastic. All right, let's finish cutting up these biscuits and then we're gonna leave it on sear. Well, so much for those biscuits, right? Have to toss that in the trash. Thank you, baby. Oh, that was very sweet. My littles just came home from lunch, though. Don't leave them with the Olive Garden because they just gave me a little mint. You can always tell when they go to Olive Garden. The mints are fantastic. All right, so here we go. We've turned our timer to sear. We're not going to leave 19 minutes. That's what we've got going on. Uh oh, let me, sorry. Let me get that. There we go. That's what we've got going on in there. So, in about six, seven minutes, we're going to have chicken and dumplings. It's going to be beautiful and thick and wonderful. I'm going to put you guys on pause and I'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks. Hey, you guys. Check out all that action. Look at that. It's boiling and it's been one and a half minutes. Okay, you guys, um, we're ready. It needs just to sit for a few minutes, and it will thicken up as it sits. I'm going to turn it. Take a look at that. Look at this. We'll cut it off. It's thickened up beautifully, but when I let it stand for a little bit, I need to let it stand for about five minutes. It will still be warm. While it stands, it will thicken, and we're going to have chicken and dumplings. I can't wait to share with you guys. Okay, here it comes. I'll be back in five. Okay, it's all done. You ready? Here we go. Woo, look at this. Chicken and dumplings. That is fantastic. All right, so that's what we're having for dinner. What are you guys having for dinner? I hope it's delicious. Show us on table time. Thanks, guys. Okay, we're back. Hi. All right, we're using the quick cooker. Quick cooker. See the quick cooker? Oh, did you hear it? I turned the lid. <gasps> I love the music. Okay, you can see this is the quick cooker. I'm gonna keep it turned this way so that you can always see what I'm doing. I just wanted to let you guys see. Here we go, opening the quick cooker. I've already removed the insides. Typically, this would have my little rack and my little ceramic bowl, but I didn't need that today. Um, so, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually saute up, well, sear some chicken. Um, you don't have to do that. With the quick cooker, if it's frozen, it doesn't matter. Throw it on in there because it's going to do what it's got to do. All you do is add a little extra time to it. This is actually thawed, so I don't need to do that. But ordinarily, I have a very bad tendency to forget to take my protein out of my freezer. So yeah, I just pop it on in here. I'm gonna turn this to sear. Grab my oil. See, I live with a lot of boys and they're all stronger than me. All right, I'm putting about three tablespoons of oil in there. 
That sounds like a lot of oil, but it's really not a lot of oil. Okay, this is turned to sear. I'm going to turn it on. That's going to heat that oil, and it doesn't take very long at all. Just, you know, very, very few minutes to actually heat that up. Um, but in the meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and cut my chicken a little bit. Not much. Move this back a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. I don't know if you can. No, you really can't. All right, let me move this back a little bit more. Alright, I'm only using three uh, chicken thighs. I love chicken thighs because I, I like the dark meat of the chicken. I think it's more, much more flavorful. It's got a little bit more fat, so I do tend to trim the fat off. You don't have to take this step. I'm taking it only because I have the opportunity right now to do that. Because um, I'm waiting on that oil to, to heat up. So I am trimming a little bit of the fat off of here. Sometimes you get them and they're really fatty. Now, I don't, I'm not trying to cook fat. <laughs> I want to cook meat. All right, just rough cut, just some strips. I'm, I'm really not trying to make this pretty. I'm not trying to make it attractive because it's just going to cut up in there anyway. See, this is still a little bit frozen. Chicken does cut nicer when it's frozen. Actually cuts a lot more easily when it's frozen. So, since we are dealing with the fact that this is still partially frozen, that's kind of cool. Alright, again, easier to cut. See, look at that. Flying right through it. Alright, here's the last of the three. Like I said, I'm only using three chicken thighs. There's enough meat on these thighs for me to do what I need to do um, and provide a lot of chicken in the chicken and dumplings. So, see, this is this is heating. I can feel it. Do you guys have the bamboo set? I want you to notice this. Look how look how used this is. This is a bamboo spoon. It was one of the set of three. You can see the pampered chef. Can you see the pampered chef? It's in here. Um, this was one of the first items that I bought when I moved to Virginia and got invited to. Um, a home cooking party, a pampered chef cooking party with a friend of mine. We're still friends. Um, but I had all three of these in perfect condition until we house sat, I mean, we dog sat from one of my grand dogs. And as I was cooking dinner one night, the grand dog jumped up to the counter, grabbed my cutting board. I had beef chunks on it. I was making beef stroganoff. I had beef chunks up here. She grabbed my my cutting board with my beef chunks and two of my wooden, well, my bamboo utensils and destroyed it all in a matter of minutes. Like, I could not get close. The dog just destroyed it all. I was furious. Okay, so what I'm doing I'm here is, see, that didn't take long to heat up, did it? You can hear it. Can you hear it? That sizzle is going. And all I'm doing is just slightly browning this meat. Because what I really want to do is add all these veggies. Yes, even the potato. I'm going to add all these veggies to my, to my pot here. And I'm going to give all of this a little bit of a sear. Just start to cook it down a little bit. Obviously, I don't need to saute my vegetables, all right? It's not necessary to saute my vegetables because I'm cooking a soup, basically. Okay, here's another little interesting tidbit. If you do not have boxes of broth, that's okay. I have lots of bouillon. And truthfully, I prefer using bouillon cubes over using boxes of broth because I can get a more intense flavor using the bouillon cubes than I can um, broth. The reason for that is I'm going to put four cups of water in here, but I'm going to put five bouillon cubes. So essentially, I'm going to have four cups of broth with extra chicken. All right, so here we go. That's 
two cups. Two more cups. Yum, yum, yum. All right. And I told you. Five bouillon cubes. So, like I said, I just, I really love the intensity. I know I've got chicken in there. I get it. But there's just an intensity of flavor that comes through beautifully when I do this. So, so far, I've put in here one carrot, half of a medium onion. I don't care what kind of onion you use. If you want to use, you know, I wouldn't recommend a red onion, but I will use either white onions or Vidalia. This is a Vidalia. I prefer Vidalia over anything because it's such a mild flavor, but I do use onion in just about everything I cook. I think I might have mentioned that. Yep. Okay, last bouillon cube. Here we go. I'm also going to use, typically I would use uh, the garlic and herb seasoning, which oddly enough, last night I ran out of. I use the garlic and herb pampered chef seasoning for almost everything. Again, you know, the onion, whatever. Um, I seriously will use garlic and herb in all my soups. I use garlic and herb in my stews. I use garlic and herb in some of my Mexican dishes, um, particularly when I'm very interested in putting together my own seasoning profile. Like, I love cumin. I love chili powder. I love a lot of these things. But a lot of the time, I prefer putting my own flavor profile. So I will use the garlic and herb rather than using the Southwest or the um, Carnitas, which I also use a lot. Like, I have three bottles of Southwest seasoning right now, um, and I have two of the Carnitas because, uh, yeah, we eat a lot of Mexican food, and I really love it. Um, but I'm getting ready to use what's called Nature's Own, and I use that in place of the garlic and herb that I don't have. Oh, nature seasons. It's nature seasons seasoning blend. Can you see that? Yeah, there you go with Morton's. And I'm probably going to put a good three tablespoons, two tablespoons. No, probably more like three. And you're going to think it's salty, but it's not. And the reason it's not is because it's got potatoes in there. And the potatoes are going to absorb it, but potatoes naturally don't have salt and they need salt. So between the potatoes and the chicken, this is going to be really awesome. All right. That's everything. I'm not putting else, anything else in there. That's all I'm doing. All right. On the quick cooker, I want you to notice something. This is the steam release button. This is where the steam comes out. Notice how that's kind of cattywampus right now. That's not straight. You want this to be straight. It needs to be straight and even with this. And this... See, sometimes when you push it in, it stays depressed a little. Now, yes, that is to help you. You can manually release the steam and walk away because this will keep it releasing on its own. But you really want that to be flush and you want this to be completely even. Otherwise, you're really going to have a problem that you don't want to have. All right, and the problem you're going to have is that steam is not going to build up as it needs to inside here. So I'm going to stop with the sear make sure everything is lined up properly and I'm going to turn my dial to chicken and poultry no I'm not turning it to stew I am turning it to chicken and poultry the reason for that is because I need this done quickly I waited a little longer than I should have to get everything ready and I want it done fast so I'm moving it to the chicken and the poultry and it's going to default to 10 minutes I don't, I mean 15 minutes. I don't need 15 minutes. I only need 10 because I seared the meat and I started the cooking process already. So I'm going to press time. Let me try to move this back a little bit so you can see. I'm going to press time and I'm going to go down to 10 minutes and I'm going to hit start. Now this is where you can see it's beginning to build pressure. 
this will continue this little pattern of blink 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 until the pressure has come up to the, the proper amount for cooking this. While that's happening, there's heat in there. So it is cooking, okay? So I'm gonna put you guys on pause while this builds up its little deal and cooks.